So today on Project Shop, we are absolutely overrun by a bunch of basically steel. This stuff came from a dealership down in Miami. These were actually high bays like inside the building, but they're HID lights. So they do have a transformer. I haven't opened up the cover to see if they're copper yet, but you know, we're hoping that we're going to get some copper out of them. But the whole housings are basically just steel and I got a bunch of other steel in here. I started cutting up these pipes. Now the price of prepared steel and sheet steel is only like a two cent a pound difference. But I got a bunch of prepared steel so I'm going to try to optimize my prepared steel today and get as much money out of it as possible. So I'm going to cut these in half so I can get prepared steel. I'm using just a little bit of WD-40 and a blade to make the blade last longer. Now I have a ton of old used blades that I like to use for stuff like this. So I'm not putting a lot of money into, you know, cutting this up. I could use my torch, but I'm out of, um, I'm out of oxygen at the moment. I have a bunch more over there I'm gonna cut up. We're gonna clean off this trailer, get all the steel out of here. It's just a mess out here right now. Oh, check this out. Someone, uh, one of my customers gave me a new box for my trailer. He's seen how dilapidated my one was, so. That was nice of them. It's got a cool little, uh, little cage on the top there. So we have a bunch of other scrap down in here. Big old stator. Man, I had to, uh, I had to break a generator down on site in the backyard and hand cart the whole generator out. I already got rid of the big V6 engine, but uh, we're gonna add that to our stator pile. There's some heavy steel in there we're gonna pull off. Bunch of stuff in this bin, hopefully we can get to today. And then back here, we have a bunch of prepared steel. That bin's full, that one's half full. Over here, we have two full bins. So I'll peel some of that off. Today we're gonna to focus on basically just getting the steel out of here that's pretty accessible and ready to go. The scrap yard closed at like 4.30 or something, so we'll try to leave here at like 3.30. I think it's like 10 o'clock now or something. So basically today is just gonna be a steel day. Clean up, get the steel out of here. Then we'll probably do some micro scrapping later on in the afternoon. I have a bunch of AC units on the other side that I tried to sell on Marketplace, but Everybody's a low baller and nobody wants to pay for them. And it's just a weird item to try to sell. I hate to sell them because they were used. I am going to keep probably two of the five ton units for myself. We can put this under air, which would be really nice. But the rest of them, you know how we do it, man. We're going to send that shit right to the scrap yard. So we're going to get right on cutting up that. We don't have much time. We want to get the trailer loaded as much as we can. We don't want to overload this trailer. Those barrels probably weigh 1,500 pounds a piece. So we might put two of them in the bed of the truck. I don't know how that's going to work with my bent uh, cherry picker. You know, I, I uh, bent this picking up a 1,500 pound uh, pile of copper. <laughs> We're just gonna have to be a little more careful in the future. So I'm gonna get right back on cutting that up. We'll time lapse all that. Get some steel on a trailer. See how much money we can make in steel today. I'm not a big fan of steel because of how much work's involved and what you get out of it. I'm more of a non-ferrous type scrapper, but I do get steel. So it piles up and we gotta deal with it. So we're gonna get right on it. Today's motivation is brought to you by a small thing of uh, Red Bull. I'm actually trying to cut down. Instead of the 20 ounce cans, it's an 8.4 ounce can. And we're gonna be listening to some Jelly Roll today. So if you're ever wondering what type of music I listen to in a shop, it's literally everything. Depends on the day or the mood or if I get tired of listening to one genre of music, I switch to another. I like to just keep it rolling, see what's out there, you know? We don't discriminate around here. <laughs>
Okay, I want to give you guys some head cam action here. Show you, um, you know, uh, the right tool for the right job. So I was cutting this up with a sawzall, which was working, but when I got into this thinner metal, it was like real jittery, shaking, uh, grabbing the metal. If I would have had it clamped down, it would have went a lot better, but uh, when you have a hydraulic jaw, it's uh, the right tool for the job. Now that stuff, like this stuff would have been too uh, thick for this to cut. Um, but this thing is just mowing through this thing like butter. Even though I got broken tips, it's still, see that? No problem. It's barely even putting some PSI on there. Now this, since these blades really don't wear out, you can cut all day long with this thing. Not have to worry about breaking your blade. You know, the cost of the blade. This thing here, if you actually look at it, it actually has like a really dull, almost flat spot right here. So it's more of a shear than actually cutting. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to kind of move that pile around twice because the way it was stacked on this trailer in the beginning. Now, having this thing not on the tool balancer is uh, really makes a difference. But how fast it goes through here compared to cutting with anything else, you know? Yeah, I feel for the uh, firemen that gotta wield these things, man. They save your life with them, give them some respect. These things ain't, ain't light. Oh yeah. Definitely the right tool for the job. <laughs> well, we're getting a little pile of prepared steel here. Um, I'm gonna root around, see if there's anything else I wanna cut up. I need to bring all this stuff in. I'm keeping this. I'm actually gonna use some of this stuff to make some shelves in my office. So all this other stuff, I might have a use for that. I'm gonna keep. This stuff is actually, um, there's a bunch of aluminum and whatnot in there, so. We'll go inside and see if we can't find anything else to cut up with the jaw. So anyway, what we're going to do is work on this mess right here. I want to pull all of these white things, get them on the trailer and get them out of here today so I can get my shop back. I'm going to probably take the jaw and, and cut that up real quick. We have a whole warehouse on the other side full of these and I'm just going to scrap them out. I'm tired of them taking up room in my shop. Okay, here's where we're at. Unfortunately, this thing is one big aluminum coil, one small copper coil. So there is copper to be recovered. We will crack all these transformers, but this was kind of tedious, man. This is another one of those deals where you got a bunch of Phillips and then you got this flathead, man. I don't know why these lighting companies love to use these flatheads, but they're annoying. And, and look at this. This is uh, like a star bit or something. Then you had Phillips bits to take this off. And then these are flathead. It, there's no rhyme or reason to the, the screws that these people use. It's very frustrating, to be honest with you. But um, this is gonna be something I'm gonna have to lay out and uh, kind of do all at once. Otherwise, doing it one at a time is just gonna be overwhelming and very tedious. So I'm gonna just go ahead and pull all of these off and get them up on the table and then uh, get these things. But I don't have time to do that today. Well, I'm gonna do it later, but right now I'm focusing on getting uh, as much prepared steel on this trailer as possible so I can get it out of here. I gotta go to Miami tomorrow, but I wanna get rid of uh, some of this steel as well tomorrow. We're gonna try to get as much of this out of here uh, today as possible. So now, we're gonna put that to the side and we're gonna focus on just loading up the steel that's ready to go. I kind of had to take a couple minutes to clean up 
found a barrel with some transformers so we got some transformers over here to process I got all this prepared steel here and this one once I get these two out of here I'll move this stuff get back in here we got two full bins uh, these are gonna be really heavy to try to load so I'm gonna come over here with another empty drum and just kind of peel off like uh, a quarter of that unfortunately you know i gotta handle that steel more than i want to but it is what it is so we're gonna get this stuff up on the trailer and off to the steel yard Okay, here we go. We got it all strapped down, ready to go. Wind up with uh, five barrels, about, most of them were like two thirds full. These first two were heavy as heck. That's why I had to drag them up with a crane. The other ones I had peeled some off and, and kind of split it between three drums, so that wasn't too bad. But we're running late. Scrap yard's gonna close soon, so we gotta get on the road here. Ah, finally get to take a break and some AC. <laughs> Well, we got some weight. We came across that scale at 18,460 pounds, man. My little trailer is screaming. <laughs> All right, we need a forklift, man. This place is like dead today. Right, although it is at the end of the day. a new forklift operator because that guy was a clown and uh, had no business being on that machine he almost took out my tire like three times all right so we were at 18,460 let's see what we had We're at 12,440. So we had 6,000 pounds basically. Three ton. <laughs> That's not a bad steel day. Now if they would just give me more money for steel. What's the best you guys ever got for steel? Mine was like, uh, I think I got 15 cents a pound for prepared steel back in the day. And uh, it ain't been close to that since. Oh, I said between four and 500, we were 496.65. Dang, I should have loaded up a couple more little chunks I had in the shop. We could have hit $500. It's been a long time since I had a $500 um, steel ticket. We'll get there, we'll do another one. Oh yeah, they are closing down. All right, let's go get paid. We came across the scale there at uh, 18,460 pounds we left at 12,440 so we literally had 6,020 pounds literally three tons eight and a quarter cents a pound which is low i think i should have probably pressed them for a little bit more bringing in that much weight but whatever 496 pounds for uh just cleaning out the shop i'm happy with that <laughs> We still got a ton of steel there. I got a lot of transformer steel, all that sheet steel. What I'm gonna do is try to go back to the shop. Uh, I'm gonna take a break for a little bit, maybe do some stuff on the computer, cool down, wait till, wait till it cools down outside a little more. And then we're gonna try to recover some uh, copper and aluminum. 
Uh, I want to go down to Miami tomorrow. There's some stuff I have to pick up down south. So you know me, I always like to kill two birds with one stone, going down south selling some copper, and on the way back, bring back more material. So we'll see how that goes, and hopefully we'll make a couple more dollars tomorrow. So if you come this far, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, because we got lots more scrapping to do. I'll tell you where we're going, right to the scrap yard. Copper King's over here looking anorexic, man. It's been a while since it's had a meal. So we had to go out and get some fruit salad for it. Look at all these colors, man. We got some big old 600 MCM for it to munch down on. <laughs> so this is where the line was. And I guess it came down, went through that cubby up there. But look at it, it's just down here. It's a dust. Wow, look at it, it's all over the coil. Man, look at these coils, I wonder if they're copper. <laughs> Gasless, now this weld here was made with uh, that welder right there, me just trying to figure out the bead. So I'm gonna run one gasless so we can uh, see. I'll just leave this tip on it even though it's supposed to have uh, this this tip right here when you run uh, the flux core okay so as you can see there's splatter everywhere all these little BBs is from that. And you get this kind of horrible looking weld until you scrape it down. And it's not so bad. But there's always crap on there. Looks nothing like that. Now let's crank up some gas. I wonder if um, you're supposed to change the polarity back. Maybe. I'll try it. 
almost looks like he should. Yeah, that's a possibility. So whenever you're welding with flux core, I turn it off. Turn the gas off already? I will. Uh, whenever you're welding with flux core, you're supposed to change the polarity. You, on flux core, you need a positive uh, ground. And then when you're running regular wire, you need a, a negative ground. So, I don't know. Did it say anything about that? Wherever you're reading? Have you ever seen it like that? Flip it and see what All happens. All right, we're going to flip it around. <laughs> 